Femoral tabular hip joints, one of the most important joints in the body because it has uh, a triplanar joint that has to have a lot of range of motion. We often neglect that. One of the problems is anterior hip capsule adhesions. That's the first thing that we're going to address today. If you do not have good hip extension, every, with every step as you follow through, it's going to crank on the low back, make the low back have to come forward. Cram those facet joints together and give your client low back pain. So we've got to make sure that the anterior hip capsule, iliofemoral ligaments and all those things are happy. To do that, there are two ways to do it. This is a setup that I like best. I come over with my arm pit, I push down on the arch of the foot, I grab here, and then I pick it up and get under like this. This is a really, really good uh, position because you can do internal femoral rotation, external femoral rotation, hip extension. The only thing you can't do is hip flexion in this one. So you can do all the other motions of the hip here at the femoral tabular joint with one simple motion. For those of you who don't think they can do that technique, try it first. And if you don't think you can do it, do it the standard way, which is you come around here, hook that arm around here, and then come in and grasp the knee. Notice how this hand picked it up. OK, so this is what it looks like when you do this. But we're not going to do that. We're going to come back to here, my preferred way of doing it. Now, you want to have this left pin hand on the hip capsule right below the ischial tuberosity. Then I'm just going to lean my body weight to my left foot, keeping this pin hand very, very sturdy and still while I just lift. So it's this kind of thing. Putting a lot of motion through there. Unless they're hypermobile, you don't want to be overstretching that capsule. So here you go. Aaron needs a little bit of this in this uh, hip capsule, so we're going to loosen him up a little bit. Now we're going to bring the hip into abduction away from the body, and I'm still going to keep my hand on the hip capsule there and give it a stretch. Aaron, would you put your, push your knee toward your other knee here? Two, three, four, five, and relax. I jostle a joint. Again, two, three, four, five, and I jostle the joint. Okay, so anterior hip capsule. What about iliopsoas? This also works rectus femoris. What about iliopsoas? It's hard to do. You've got an athlete on the table with a heavy leg and you're a small therapist. You do the surfboard technique. Here I've got him in this position. I just come under like that. Like you're jumping up on a surfboard. You've got to get up real quick. Get that knee in there real quick. Then just let it come into extension. Why do I do that? Because as long as the knee's flexed, it takes psoas out of it and activates rectus femoris. So you're not doing any good with the leosoas. So if you've got to do it this way, I have sideline techniques for it too. You just come in this time, same place, ischial tuberosity, below ischial tuberosity. You get up on the butt, you're going to get in trouble. Don't do that. Get back here and then lean. Notice how my right knee is helping me elevate this heavy leg. Yeah. Ooh, good. You can do a contract relax if you want. I'm not going to, but you can. See, his iliopsoas is a lot more flexible than rectus femoris. So you make notes, your treatment notes, and come back and work that rectus femoris hip capsule.